Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. A while ago, I did a tutorial on how to morph one object to another. Now, one thing I did in that video at the beginning of the tutorial, I actually morphed an element while holding it in my hand and I got a ton of questions on how to do that. Here, I've got a simple remote control and it actually works, let me show you. And back to me. Now, all I did is I placed this element in my hand and I moved my hand over it to transform it into a totally different object. Pretty simple, right? You wanna know how I did that? Let's see that again in slow motion. So place the object in your hand, simply move your hand over it to transform it into a... Oh, God damn it, Selena. Let's try that again. So place the object in your hand, move your hand over it to... Transform it into something totally different. That's much better. Now, it's actually a really easy practical effect to do, but you should know how to do little cleanups in After Effects and how to apply effects and manage the interface, so this is probably an intermediate tutorial. But enough talking, let's jump right into it. Here I have a clip from the intro of this tutorial. It's a simple clip of me moving the remote around, placing it in my hand, and as I spin one hand over the remote, Selena pops up, replaces the remote with a soccer ball and then vanishes from the shot. And I continue to move as if nothing had happened. We want to transition from here to here. And obviously during that transition, we want to reshape the remote controller into the soccer ball with a nice morphing effect. You may notice that even though I'm trying, I'm not holding the exact same position. So there is going to be a little bit of cleanup required for the effect. But I think this is actually really good to show for this tutorial because most visual effects that I've ever done all required quite a bit of cleanup work to make them look convincing. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to split this clip into two layers. I want one layer where I'm holding the remote and I want a separate layer where I'm holding the soccer ball so that I can transition between the two. For this, duplicate your layer by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D. Actually, I'm also going to rename these two layers just so I know which one is which. The bottom one is going to be my remote layer and the top one is going to be my soccer ball layer. Next, I will trim these clips down to the right moment. For example, the soccer ball, I want to trim down to start just as I'm holding the soccer ball and I want to go back a little bit more and I want to have the remote layer end where I'm just holding the remote. So if we're placing these two clips closely together, obviously the transition is not very clean at the moment, but we will fix that up in a moment. First, I want to zoom in a little bit and I want to really, really cleanly align this one. So just as I'm stopping to move my hand here, I don't want to have too much movement, just as I'm stopping this, I want to transition over to the soccer ball scene. Uh, maybe just as I'm moving my hand over there. So align these two layers so they've kind of cut across as cleanly as you can from one to the other. Let's play this back. That's actually not too bad. There's still a little bit of a jump during the transition, but we will fix that up in a moment. Maybe I'll make the remote layer a little bit longer just because I can see my hand jump quite a bit from the left to the right. You want to get the transition as clean as you can just because it saves you a lot of time later on having to clean it up. I think with this transition I'm actually quite happy. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add the reshaping, the morphing effect from the remote control into the soccer ball. I'm quickly going to trim down my workspace to include only the content of the two layers. For this, simply place the timeline indicator at the end of the second clip, press N on your keyboard to move the work area end marker to your timeline indicator, and then you can right click onto the work area slider and select trim comp to work area. Let me make a little bit more space here so we can see what is going on. So what you want to do is you want to move a couple of frames before the transition. So this is where we'll start the transition and the morphing effect of the remote controller into the soccer ball so that by the time it reaches the second layer, the transition is complete. So maybe let's go back just a little bit under a second. Next, duplicate the remote layer. I will call this layer remote morph. Next, trim down the layer to start exactly where you want the morph effect to start. And the next thing you want to do is you want to add a mask onto this remote control. For this, zoom all the way in, select the pen tool and draw a simple mask around the controller. Now, because my hand actually moves during the transition, we need to animate the mask to follow the remote control. So what we can do for that, simply open up the mask path properties by pressing M with your layer selected and click the little stopwatch icon on the mask path property. Then step through your composition frame by frame and adjust the mask to follow the remote control as precisely as you can. 
The next thing you want to do, and this is quite important, select the mask that you've just added and rename the mask to remote. The reason this is important is because we will use this mask in the reshape effect and it can get really confusing if you don't know which mask is for the remote and which one is for the soccer ball. Let's zoom all the way back out. And now let's repeat this process for the soccer ball. I'm going to duplicate my soccer ball layer and call it soccer ball morph. Now obviously my soccer ball layer doesn't actually start until the transition is complete, so what you want to do? So you want to take the beginning of this layer and make sure it starts exactly when the remote starts to morph into the soccer ball. Also, you want to make sure that the layer actually ends when the transition is complete, so that at the very end, once the soccer ball is fully morphed in, it transitions over into the footage where you hold the soccer ball. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Again, just add a mask to the soccer ball throughout this transition time. As before, because the soccer ball is moving, we want to animate the mask path to follow the shape of the soccer ball during this transition. So open up the mask properties and enable keyframes for the mask path property. The other thing I want to do as well is because I can't actually see the soccer layer, I can only see the mask out soccer ball. And if you scrub through this, you can kind of see the soccer ball disappearing on the edges of the mask. I want to temporarily set the mask mode to num so that I can work with the full layer, animate the mask, and I will set this back to add in a moment. Simply step through your footage frame by frame and animate the mask to follow the shape of your soccer ball. And I'd say that doesn't look too bad. Do remember to set the mask mode back to add and let's also rename this mask to soccer ball. And now let's add the morph effect. What you want to do is you want to return to the beginning of your transition, select the soccer ball mask, copy it, control C, select the remote morph and paste this mask onto the remote morph layer. Open up the mask settings for this layer. You will now see two masks on this layer, which is the remote and the soccer ball mask. And you have to set the mask mode for the soccer ball to none. Next, select the remote mask on the remote morph layer, copy it, control C, and paste it over onto your soccer ball morph layer. So now your soccer ball morph layer has a soccer ball mask and a remote mask, and you may have guessed it, the remote mask you want to set to none. This is why it's very important to name your masks and your layers properly, because otherwise this is going to confuse the hell out of you. Let's transition the remote control into the soccer ball first. What I will do is I will first disable the visibility on my soccer ball morph layer and let's deal with the remote morph one first. So we want to reshape this remote control into the shape of the soccer ball during this transition time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over into the effects and presets panel and search for the reshape effect. Apply the reshape effect to the remote morph layer. In here, you're going to select a source mask and a destination mask. The source mask is going to be the remote mask, the mask that is actually sitting around the object we want to reshape. So source mask, set it to remote. The destination mask is the mask that defines the shape that you want this object to end up with. We want to reshape this remote to end up in the shape of the soccer ball. So for our destination mask, we're going to select soccer ball. The next thing you have to define, you want to tell After Effects how to reshape the contents of the first mask into the contents of the second mask. And you do this via correspondence points. What you have here is you have a single correspondence points. This tells After Effects that this part, this corner of the smaller object of the remote will turn into this part of the soccer ball over here. But the rest will kind of just get squished however After Effects thinks is most appropriate. Let's try this out and increase the percent on the reshape effect to 100%. And it actually works quite well, but in order to guide After Effects a little bit more on how to reshape these two elements, you can actually add more correspondence points. And the way you do this, Simply open up this correspondence points property here. It shows you there's one point at the moment. And then all you do is hold down Alt on your keyboard and click onto the first mask. This added another correspondence points. And let's say this top left corner of the remote, I want to reshape to become this upper part of the soccer ball. Let's add a few more correspondence points. So the left side of the remote, I want to turn into the left side of the soccer ball. The right side of the remote, I want to turn into the right side of the soccer ball and the bottom of the remote I want to turn into the bottom of the soccer ball. So if you now reshape this to 100%, you can see the remote filling in this whole space a little bit nicer. Now you've got all of your correspondence points set up and After Effects knows how to reshape your remote control into the shape of a soccer ball. Make sure your timeline indicator is at the beginning of the transition and then add a keyframe to the percent property of the reshape effect. Set the percentage to 0%. Go to the end of the transition and increase the percent to 100%. If you scrub through your clip now, you will see the remote controller taking the shape of the soccer ball. 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to fade out this layer so it becomes less and less visible as it takes the shape of the soccer ball. For this, simply reveal the opacity property on the remote morph layer by pressing T, add a keyframe to it, start it out at 100% at the beginning of the transition, then go to the end of the transition and set it to 0%. So as the remote control grows into the shape of the soccer ball, it becomes invisible. Now this is the first half of the morph effect complete, now let's do the same to the soccer ball. I'm going to enable the soccer ball and disable the remote morph for a second. Select the soccer ball morph layer and apply the reshape effect. This time the source mask is the soccer ball and we're going to reshape into the shape of the remote. Now we're not actually going to turn the soccer ball into the remote, we're going to play this back in reverse so the soccer ball emerges from the shape of the remote control. First, as before, set up the correspondence points exactly like you did before. Yeah, I'd say that's not actually too bad. As before, add a keyframe to the percent property and this time we're starting it out at 100%. Go to the end of your transition and set the percent property to 0%. So now your soccer ball is going to start out in the shape of the controller and it's going to turn into the shape of the soccer ball. We're also going to animate the opacity, but again we're going to do this in inverse, so reveal the opacity, enable the keyframes and start it out at 0% and then at the end of your transition set it to 100%. So the soccer ball is going to fade in as it takes shape from the shape of the remote controller. If you now also enable the visibility on the remote morph layer and go back to the beginning of a transition, maybe let's unselect the layer so we can see what is going on, you will see the remote control morph into the shape of the soccer ball. Now obviously yes there is still a jump, especially here these last two frames you can see my hand snap up to sit under the soccer ball. We're going to fix that up just in a moment. Um, for now let's zoom out a little bit and play this back to see what this looks like. Yeah this is actually coming together quite nicely. So let's deal with this snapping effect that's still happening and see how we can clean this up a little bit. Let me quickly select all of the layers and press U twice to hide all of the keyframes on them so we're going back to a really nice neat view of your layers. There are two little tricks that I love to use when I'm trying to transition from one layer to another and there's a little bit of a jump between the two. The first is I don't jump 100% in one frame. I usually like to blend the second layer in within one or two frames by just increasing the opacity. The second trick and this one is much more interesting is I like to use the liquify effect to reshape one layer into the shape of the other one a little bit more just at the moment of the transition just so that the jump doesn't feel quite as noticeable. So what I am going to do is I'm going to select my remote layer and I'm going to search for the liquify effect and apply it to my layer. The liquify effect basically allows you to paint custom distortions onto your footage and then control the amount of that distortion with a simple percentage property. Let me quickly reset what I just scribbled on there. Go to the very end of the transition just as you're about to do the cut and zoom in a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to quickly show the second layer. So I'm going to extend this a little bit into here and I'm going to reduce the opacity of the second layer by a little bit just so I can see what that transition will look like. So maybe let's fade both of them in at the moment. And then I'm going to go back to my remote layer and I'm going to use the liquify effect to push this image a little bit more into the shape of the layer that I'm transitioning to. For this under tools just select the smudge tool on the very left side. You can try all the other ones out as well as you want. Under Warp Tool Options you can change the brush size, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And so here I can see my fingers for example, I want to push up my fingers a little bit so that they kind of match up a little bit more with the final shape of my hand on the new layer. Pull the elbow out a little bit. Now obviously this is not going to be perfect but it will greatly reduce the noticeable jump that you have in the footage and once you add a little bit of glow and sparkles and the actual transition of the effect your audience will be so focused on the morphing effect that they won't even notice the transition. I'm also going to jump over to where my right arm is because I did notice a little bit of a jump there and I'm going to blend this in as well. I'll just push it into the final shape of the arm that it's supposed to be. So you want to make sure that you kind of get in this as close as possible. Let's zoom back out and bring the opacity of the soccer ball layer back up to 100%. Now with the opacity of the soccer ball layer, I actually want to fade this layer in over the course of one or maybe two frames. So simply animate the opacity over let's say two frames and blend it in from 0 to 100% just at the very end of the transition. And the next thing we're going to do is obviously we don't want our layer to be permanently distorted throughout this whole transition which if you decrease this distortion percentage you'll see actually does quite a bit of damage to it. 
You want to animate the distortion percentage of the liquefy effect so it kicks in during the last few frames of the transition. Maybe over the course of 5 or 6 frames, simply increase the percentage from 0 to 100%. This will basically push the shape of the remote layer into the shape of the soccer ball layer, just as the soccer ball layer is fading in. This will smoothen out the jump between these two layers and the transition will be a lot less noticeable. Uh, maybe we'll start the distortion a little bit earlier actually, just so that my hand starts moving up as the soccer ball takes shape. So it kind of meets it just as it transitions over. Let's turn the soccer ball visibility back on. Yes, I mean you can kind of see my hand distorting a little bit at the bottom there just as the transition happens. But if you zoom back out and play this effect back, Now you can still see my hand distort a little bit and the only way to really get over this is to obviously stay absolutely 100% still when you're replacing the object in your hand. But if you end up with a little bit of a rough jump between the two pieces, this technique can help you smoothen out the transition. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a glow just during the transition on the soccer ball just to add a little bit more detail and make this transition look a little bit more interesting. In order to do that, I will actually increase the length of my soccer ball morph layer because I do want the glow to kind of fade out towards the end of this layer. So I'm going to add a couple of frames to this one. And of course, I will have to animate the mask for this layer. So let's solo the soccer ball morph layer. Turn off the mask. Zoom in a little bit and then animate the soccer ball mask path for the last few frames that we've just added. Cool, that should do. Let's zoom back out. And again, don't forget to set the soccer ball mask back to add. Now, we want to add a glow just around the outside of the soccer ball. And to do this, we're going to duplicate the soccer ball morph layer. So Ctrl D to duplicate it. And I'm going to call this layer soccer ball glow. Before we apply the glow effect, we want to pre-compose this layer. So simply select the layer and go to layer pre-compose. I'm going to call this one soccer ball glow comp and make sure you've got the move all attributes into the new composition option selected. Then click OK. Finally, search for the glow effect in the effects and presets panel and apply it to your layer. We don't want to glow the color channel, we actually want to glow the alpha channel of the ball, so we want to glow the outside of it. Zoom in a little bit, you can see this a little bit better. Lower the glow threshold and increase the glow radius, so you can kind of see the glow coming out on the outside. Okay, let's increase the glow radius a little bit. And the cool thing is because this glow is actually applied to the outside of this soccer ball layer and the soccer ball layer is reshaping itself as it morphs. If you scrub through this, you can see the glow appear from very small on and outwards taking shape with the soccer ball. So what I want to do is actually want to animate the intensity of this glow and maybe the glow radius. So go to the beginning of your transition, enable keyframes on the glow radius and the glow intensity. Maybe let's start them both off as zero. Go to about the middle of the transition, maybe a bit earlier. Let's jack this up. Then let's move forward a little bit and fade the glow back out. Now return to the beginning of your effect, zoom back out and play back your final morphing effect. And that is how you can morph an object that you're holding in your hand. And I really hope I've answered all of those questions that I've been getting for all of those years on how I created this effect. It is a really simple effect to film and it really just comes down to a little bit of trickery to make that transition seem natural and morph the object in your hand while you're moving. And that's all there is to it. It is actually really simple once you know how to do the actual transition and then just a little bit of cleanup work in Adobe After Effects. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them in the section below. Please remember to subscribe, hit that like button and share the video around. It really helps out a lot. And you know, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.